arriving now. <coughs> Members, let us all stand up. Let us all stand up. For those of you that are still down at the serving point, please come. You see, His Excellency and the Chair of the Kenari Party. Let us welcome the Chair. The Chair is arriving. Abu. I am here again to address you on the issue of social economic transformation of the Ugandans. The, for the new members of parliament, for the new members of parliament, we had a, a lot of time in Chiangkwanzi to discuss this. However, the old members did not attend because they were busy with the parliament. We are now here and we are set. And we have got these four years and something in which to do what our previous uh, colleagues could not fully do, and that is to transform our people from being uh, subsistence actors to all being in the commercial economy, in the money economy. I happen to be privileged to have been involved in this effort for the last 60 years, trying to change the lives of the people of Uganda. So what I tell you is not hearsay, is not what I, I, I heard people talking about, it is what I know. It so happens that my family has never been in leadership. In the pre-colonial times, my family was not involved in leadership. Although we, are, although we are related to the kings and so on by marriage, but we were never in leadership. We are only involved in the army, in fighting. If there is fighting, you call us. But otherwise, I'm a cattle keeper. My family was independent, depending on our cows. And working with our neighbors, who are involved in crops. Therefore, it was only in 1970 that I was the first person in my family to be in the government, 1970, when I was appointed as an assistant secretary in the civil service, the first one. We had never had a Muruka chief, we never had a Gombora chief, for us, cultural people. So, when, we, when, when I, but, but we had also refused to join the new religion. The first person to join the new religion in my family was Amos Kaguta. 
1947, when he, he took us to be baptized for the first, even me, I was already born, I was almost three. And you can imagine the religion had been here for almost 70 years, but we had refused to join it. We were in our old religion. So therefore, my family is based on independence by production. Through cattle keeping and crops. But at some stage, fortunately, Mr. Kaguta realizes that if we do not get modern education, we may be left behind. So that's how we sent me to school. And when I went to the school system, I learned about the whole world. What happens here, what happens there, what happens here. And that's how I was able to formulate my clear ideas about our own people. Starting with Ntungamo, where I was born, and then later on the bigger Angkore area. In the school system, I learned about the world, the Egyptian civilization, the Mesopotamian civilization, the Greeks, the Roman Empire, and how it collapsed in 450 AD, the Dark Ages in Europe, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment in Europe, the Industrial Revolution, colonialism, imperialism, and so on, and where we were at that time in the 1960s. So then I was able to say, oh, if this is what's happening you know, in the world, how about my people here in Ntungamo? and in, in the greater uh, Ankore. I have had time to capture all this in writing. And today, I will ask the staff to give you at least three of the booklets, which I have given you before, but in case you lost them, I will give them to you again. The first booklet is entitled From Obwirza to Amatafari. Obwirza is the Rinyankore word for the grass you thatch the house with. When the grass is in the bush, Banyankore call it Evinyazi, Obunyazi. When you use it to, to thatch a house, the name changes, it becomes Obwirza. So in that, in that booklet, I give you what we, as a young student movement in the 1960s, did to get Banyankore out of the grass stacked houses. It's a, a story, it's not a, 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 a something fictional, it is on the ground. You can go and visit all the homes in many parts of Ankore, and you will not find a grass stacked house. you not find one, except if they keep it just for customary, uh, as a, a, a memorial. As a, uh. So that, book, that booklet is there. I have given it to you before, please. I will give you another copy. But you can give the copies afterwards, not now, so, so that we, the, we, we, the only members listen to what I'm saying. 
The second booklet is what I gave out when I toured the country three, three years ago in the zone meetings. It is entitled The Four Sectors and the Seven Areas. I gave it to all the NRM leaders in the, in the zones, the 18 zones which, which I addressed. And the third one, there are many other booklets, but I, I want to concentrate on this. The third one is the, the, the address I gave to the NRM convention last year in January in Nambore. I think that I, 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 I had given it a title that time, but this time, when I, I, I write a new version, I think I would entitle it, How Africa Missed the Bus, Missed the Bus of History. So in these booklets, I bring out what I found in 1959 when I left uh, Ntungamo to go abroad to Mbarara. Ntungamo is only 40 miles from uh, Mbarara, but for us, we thought it was so far away. The Banyankwere would say, Korzagar can we live in Mbarara? By the time you come back, it will, be, it will take you as long as you go to, 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 to Mbarara and come back, because they were walking on foot. So when I went to Mbarara, and the eight years I was in Mbarara, two years in Mbarara High School, six years at Ntare, apart from what I was reading, in the school system, which was exposing me to what was happening in the whole world, I saw three examples which helped me to clarify my views. Example number one was the Mbarara government stock farm. When I visited Mbarara government stock farm, I could see that they were doing things different from the way we were doing things in Ntungamo. Because in Ntungamo, we were all democratically outside the money economy. There was not a single family except the Indians who were engaged in the money economy. A few parts of Ankore, like uh, I used to hear, one sub-county called Ndeja, I used to hear that we used to hear that they were growing coffee. And parts of Igara Chamunga, they had started growing uh, tea. And also a bit of coffee in Cheizova. But in Ntungamo, there was no, 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 no commercial activities other than the Indians who had shops. And there was one family which was selling a shonzi. These are the ones I used to see doing commercial activity. So the whole area was outside the money economy. Mr. Kaguta would sell a, a, a bull once in a while to pay my school fees. The school fees was not so much, but for them they thought it was so much. Like in Mbarra High School, we were paying 420 shillings in a year. 20 shillings was caution money. So the actual fees was 400. Because caution money, if you, didn't, if you, didn't, you did not break anything in the school, you would reclaim it at the end of the two years. And to a bull, a mature bull, would go for 500 shillings. So with two bulls, I could have paid the school charges in Mbarra High School. It was not so much. But the people were not involved in money economy. 
That's why some of them could not afford to, 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 to pay. The course in Mbarra High School just needed two, two mature bulls, 400, because a bull would be like 500. Actually, a bull, a bull was more than you needed for, for a year. When we went to Tuntare, the local governments at that time were, pay, were paying bursaries for all, all, all the children who went to secondary school. So we were paying half. Because you will bring yourself a Xirani. You want to lead people, you don't know what to, to, how to, to lead them. So you are there talking about tribes, talking about religion, talking about all, all these petty, irrelevant factors. God will not be happy with you. And I have really seen this in the last 60 years. I have seen. that leadership can be a problem if you, if you do not know what to do. Like this issue of land fragmentation. This land fragmentation has been happening when the leaders are there. Even in the colonial times, I remember our chiefs would be taken to London, to, 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 to Europe, to, to, to make study tour. When you go to Europe, what, what do you see there? You see a country like UK, it's about the same size as Uganda in land area, with a population bigger than Uganda's. Even today, the population of UK is about 70 million. For us, we are only still 42 million, but the land is already fragmented. Then people say, oh, you know, the population has grown. This is not a population problem. This is a leadership problem. Because the UK has got more people than, than Uganda. Why is it that you find big farms in the in UK? You go there, you'll find big farms. Germany. But they had leaders who could show them that, yes, now that we have become more, how do we handle the issue of inheritance? Because that's where the problem comes. Somebody has got six acres, and when he's dying, say, oh, I am dying, but my children, you divide the land equally. So the six acres disappears. What will happen? What will happen? From the 60s, I was attacking this problem in Ankore. I told them that you can, the, the, the modern system has taught us how to share without fragmenting. And we, we shall depart after the part of the election to the President, Vice President, and Right Honorable Prime Minister. Taking the team and try to distribute the booklet to the Honorable. Say that they will be